Hi uh, guys, this is just a very quick demonstration of how to do uh, basic debugging in uh, C line and Rust. Uh, this is in response to a request I got, so it is slightly targeted at uh, a specific solution, but um, but yes, it, it covers debugging in general that anyone can use. Uh, the first thing to do is just to check what your debugger is that you're currently using and so forth, so that we can all make sure we're on the same page. So if we come on over here to File and then Settings, uh, uh, Build and Execution Deployment, and then we look at Tool Chains. All right. Now, my default after I installed uh, C Line was on Bundle GDB. Uh, but you can also select LLDB. Um, you might have specific reason for that. Um, I've tested it, and one feature, which is very important in debugging, I think only seems to work in LLDB, but there's many that don't work and only work in GDB. So I'm sticking to GDB. Um, but I'm not covering that today. And then the other thing is uh, you can also come down and look at uh, debugger, data views, and Rust. And you can look at the, the renderer. Um, I'm using Rust's renderer, but typically it is on bundled renderer. Um, you'll be fine if you use the bundled as well. But <coughs> just to show you where, where I am uh, with my debugging setup. So, all right, so we say OK. And the normal situation now is if you run this application, it's obviously going to print out Hello World. So if we just come up here to the little run icon, You'll see the little, okay, the little run icon there. Next to it is the, the debugging one, and uh, we'll get to get to that in a moment. All right, so if I just uh, run it, it'll run through, and yeah, it shows me hello world. So it's completed. If you want to debug uh, this or put a breakpoint in here, you put it here uh, into the left hand side here, which is called the gutter. Okay, so you just click there, um, or you can use a shortcut. And if we run now, again, if we do a normal run, obviously it's just going to go straight through and it says hello world. But if we rather click on this little debug icon or we press shift F9, okay, it'll go into debug mode. So what it does is before it goes into debug mode, is, is it does a save of your code and then it does a build and then it, it, it fires it off uh, into debug mode. So now we're on the first line here, print line. If we click on the console uh, um, tab over here on the left, next to debugger there. If we click on that, this is the actual output of our application. So now if I press uh, F9, okay, so the keys that you basically use is F7, F8, and F9. F7 is the tradition, you know, to step into uh, some code, like if it's a function. Um, F8 is to step over, and F9 is to continue till the next breakpoint or the end of the program. So if I press F9 now, it runs to the end of the program and says, hello world. Okay. Let's say, for instance, you want to uh, debug some command line parameters. Okay, um, so let me just paste some code here quickly. All right, that'll get all the command line parameters for us um, from the environment, and uh, it'll stick it into a vector called args array. Uh, the reason why args array is quite dark here now, okay, that dark array is because it's currently not being used anywhere. And uh, the moment you use it, you'll see it'll change color. So this is kind of way for, for, for just to tell you that hey, it's unused. So let's print out, for instance, our first argument. Okay. So in our hello world, we just uh, add our args array. And because it's a vector, so it's indexable. So we want to index our very first one or retrieve our very first one. And we leave our breakpoint on here. Okay. And we say shift F9 and we start debugging. Okay, so it's gone in, and uh, it's, you'll see args array is no longer this dark array. But if I hover over it, I don't get any value for it. But down here, um, you'll notice that it shows you args array. So this is in the variables tab. And it shows me that the first item in the array is a string. Okay, now this string, just in case you didn't know, always the very first item in your arguments list is actually the path to, to the, your binary, your executable. Um, so what we actually want to do is to, to be able to use the arguments, we want to use from the second one on. Now remember, there is only one. It shows us your args array, and then when we look at the, the contents of args array, it shows us there's an index zero, 
and there are no more. So there's only one. Unless we want to add another argument to our uh, input argument. So what we do is we come on over to our edit configurations, run edit configurations, and at the end of this command here, you say, okay, space, dash, dash, space. And now you can put in whatever normal arguments that you want to put in. So let's just say dash h, for instance, so for help. All right, and we say okay on that. Now, if I run it again, okay, we debug. It'll break here on print line. And if we look at args array now, we've now got two entries, of which the second one is dash h. All right, so you always start reading from the second one. So if we want to print that out, you can change this args array 0 to 1. Okay, and it'll print out our dash h. And there it does, hello world dash h. So that's how you retrieve our argument from the command line. And we check the args array with the uh, debugger, see what the contents are. Another situation that you might find yourself in is if, for instance, you need to call uh, a function, but in that function you want to do some debugging, but then you want to also remember what are one of the variables you set in the in the calling function? Okay, this is done through something called frames. So, okay, maybe a bit complex, but uh, let's let's just use that. So, let's say for instance, I take this print line out, and I stick it in a function, our own function. Just say we'll call it display. Okay, and we're going to pass in the args array to it. We could pass a reference to it. Okay, and now we create our new function. Fn, what did I call it? Display. And it takes in an array of. All right, and it has to print out. Um, oops, sorry. Doesn't return anything. Okay, and it has to print out for us um, our first argument again. But now we're doing it by calling a, a method. Okay. So I'll put a breakpoint on display, and I'll say uh, Shift F9 to run. Uh, oh, we've got a problem. Uh, what did I do? Oh, sorry. Caps on VEC. Okay, Shift F9. I still got a problem. Oh, because this is not a reference. Okay, my mistake. And uh, now Shift F9. All right, it's run through, and it's now on display. Okay, so what we want to do is, if you would now normally press F9, it'll run to co program completion. Okay. Because there's no further breakpoints that it has to hit. So if you come look at the console, it's printed out dash H. But we want to actually step into this display. And uh, again, we shift F9. And we're on display. Now we press F7. And that will then walk um, into display. So if I say F7, we are now in display. And we can look at, for instance, the, the arguments array here. Let's say we hover over it, come over here to the plus. It tells me I've got two entries inside there. Okay? And we are displaying the first one, which is good. This is what we wanted. But now, let's say, for instance, we're not quite sure. Are there only two entries in the arguments? I thought there's supposed to be three or four or five. So what you can do is you can come over here to frames. Okay? Uh, over here, if you've got your frames. And we can come and go to the the next frame, which is basically our previous function. Okay, so if I click on that, you'll notice that our variables now displays args array and not uh, arguments, because we are now inside the context of this method, okay, this function. So we can go check. Let's make sure about args array. Yeah, there were only two. Okay, so that's all good. So let's go back to our current frame, and we can look at the values, arguments, and so forth, and uh, we can say F9, and we run to the end of the program. Okay, nice and simple. If we, for instance, want to look at, so this is a bit of a specific use case for this person that requested the video. Um, let's say we have uh, some for loops. Okay, so let's say we go for, um, let's just call it for i, and not, let's run through a loop, let's say 10 times, and then inside that we have another loop, and um, we do that. Oops, we do that also a certain number of times for j in uh, naught to let's say five. Okay. All right, and 
Now what we want to do is we want to print out the product of I and J. So I times J in other words. So if we say print line and uh, we just say, uh, let's say I times J. Okay. So what's going to happen now, let's just move to the breakpoint here. Okay, if I was shift F9 on this now, if we go and we... Okay, so what it's gone and done is, it's run through the, each, each one of these loops. The outer loop, well first it does five of the inner loop and then ten of the outer loop. And so it continues. Alright, all the way through to the end. Okay. If you're not sure, for instance, uh, you know, maybe you aren't using actually I, but you're using some variable. Let's say, for instance, we want to do I in reverse. Okay. Uh, so let's say let... Okay, 10 minus i. Okay, and that will create an index that's running in reverse instead of forward. And if we then replace i here with reverse i and control s on that. So remember, we started here with uh, five zeros, the one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four. Well, naught, one, two, three, four. And if we run now, shift F9. All right, if you look at the very top, it's got different values now because we did things in reverse. But now, for some reason, you might find that there's something wrong here and whatever, and you want to do some debugging. So first thing maybe you want to do is on the actual print line, um, you want to put a breakpoint there, and we shift F9, and before it does a print of anything, okay, we can actually look at the values of stuff. So you'll see in slightly dark gray here, you see if I hover over it, it says reverse 10 up here, I0, J. So if I I'll go in a little bit, you'll see. Um, so there it actually, it, it spits out the value of these uh, variables. Now it doesn't do always show you the value, like on some reference types and stuff, it will not show it for you. Um, and I think it's also affected by, well, It'll be affected by what's on the stack and what's not and so forth. And, but in general, you'll see some values here. And if you don't see a value, it'll normally be a pointer. And you can sometimes click on the pointer and it'll resolve the actual value for you. But typically, this is your safest bet. If you come down here to variables, um, so we can see J is naught and I is naught. However, reverse I is 10. Okay, so that's what our debugger has now shown us. You can put another breakpoint over here, for instance, and uh, we can restart. And what's going to happen now is we're going to use F8. Uh, the reverse I has not been set yet. So under variables here, there is no reverse I um, because it hasn't been created yet. Okay, But now it gets created, F8, and it's created, and it shows us its value. So it starts with 10, and I F8 again and we enter this for loop and it's going to print out so it's going to be 0 times 10 and uh, so we start off with a 0 so if you click here on console it shows us 0 if you come back to our code again and we F8 okay now it's 1 times 10 and so in our console here we should expect to see a 10 which is what we do okay so that's the very basics of debugging I showed you a little bit of uh, so the most Commonly used uh, debugging uh, shortcuts is F7, F8, and uh, F9. Uh, F7 to step into code. Sometimes you'll find that when you use F7 to step into code, you don't go directly to your method that you're trying to step into, but you end up in some Rust code somewhere. Um, that's just because there's sort of a layer between what you're trying to call and to actually get to what you're trying to call. So Rust needs to have something running in between. You'll find this maybe like if you, you're working with options and stuff like that. Um, don't worry, you can just F7 constantly and you'll end up in your, in your, your method. Um, alternatively, once you get handy with debugging, you'll figure out that you can step over some of this Rust code to get to your method faster. Or alternatively, just put a breakpoint in your method and it'll hit it directly. Um, so F7 is to step into, so F8 is to step over, and uh, F9 is to continue to the next breakpoint, and if there's no next breakpoint, to the next step in the program, typically the end or, or whatever the case may be. So when I'm debugging, I typically, um, you know, you can put in print lines all over the place as well to print out the values of variables and so forth. It's, you know, 
debugging 101 kind of thing. Um, but I typically just use F7, F8, F9. And, uh, and then when I'm looking at the actual value of variables, I use this variables tab over here because it gives me more information than, than what's displayed inside the editor over here. Because like I say, sometimes it can't always do it. And there you go. That, that's, that's the absolute basics of debugging in Rust. I hope that gave you some ideas. And uh, until next time, see you guys. Bye.